What is up, my peepholes? This is your guy, Cly, and welcome back to that thrifting series. Unlike last time, I'm not going to make you just stare at my wall of board games unentertained while I talk. You get to look at this little guy while I do my little intro. Now, I'm recording this video a little early for a couple of reasons. First, I want to get it up early due to the coming holidays, and to be honest, I think I am going to make Wednesday the new day I post this. Second, I actually thrifted something this weekend that, well, made this video kind of mandatory. I'm not doing board games this time, as you could tell from the title. I'm actually going to be doing best of tech for, well, one really important reason. Now, the real question is, will he behave himself while I bring out the items? Might as well start off with the item that kicked this whole video off. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a good boy. This! Oh, this weird fan in a box. No, let me just get this out of the way. And these. Oh, come on. There we go, my friends. This bad boy is the Cooler Master. Well, I, I forgot the name of it. Arg! It's on the box. Oh, there he goes. There goes the kitty. Ah, yes. It is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Pro. This is a very, very hardcore CPU cooler. Unlike a lot of others where they just sit on top of your CPU, touching it, and then just blowing out the top, this is the part that sits on your CPU, transfers through these heat pipes into this gigantic heat sink, and blows it with a 120 millimeter fan. There are so many good reviews for this CPU cooler that I just had to have it when I saw it. They retail for 30 bucks. I got this one for seven. And even better, if you look right here, it was never even used. The zip tie is still in place on the original cable. Or, it's always going to be the original cable unless the fan gets replaced, but still! Or someone does a lot of fine soldering. It comes with everything. It has the mounting brackets for both AMD and Intel processors. It's got the mounting bracket for the additional fan. The only thing it's missing... I don't have the original thermal compound tube. At least I don't think so. Nope, it's not in here. There's that little thing. Hope that's not the thermal pad. Shouldn't be. But yeah, the only thing I'm missing is the thermal paste. I don't mind though, because I hear in the reviews that while well, this is amazing, paste not so much. And so I'm just going to use the Arctic Silver I have left over from another project. Case closed, problem solved, into the catching chair with you. Now, the next item I have to show you, it's one that you can actually thank for the existence of this channel. Let's go ahead and just pull it out. Switch on my autofocus here. Come on, there we go. And stop that. This is the EVGA GTX 760. This is not newest tech. In fact, it's a couple, I think it's going on two years old now. I actually bought this when it was only 10 months old. Uh, it's definitely been supplanted by a lot of other cards, but it's still a killer card, especially when I only paid 50 bucks for it. I don't think there's another $50 card on the market that can match this guy. This is what lets me capture my Let's Plays. I use the NVIDIA Shadowplay software, and this bad boy has enough kick to let me record at high res, and to be honest, I would be recording at 1080p instead of 720p for those if I had a 1080p monitor. Still on the hunt for one of those at a thrift store because I don't feel like dropping the dough on a monitor. That would, at this point, be the computer component that I have spent the most money on. 
Go figure. But yeah, 50 bucks for what was a $300 card and is still about a $200 card, if not a little bit more. Haven't looked at the price in a while. But yeah, this was one of my first really good tech finds of the year. I was pleased. Now this next find was featured in another video I did about well finding a new microphone, but I think it's time for it to have a little bit of camera time. See a little focus fix. There we go. This, my friends, is the Audio Technica AT822 stereo microphone. It is a really, really good mic. I've been having a lot of fun playing with it, and to be honest, it took a while to get used to because, as you heard in that video, it doesn't have a lot of kick on its own. It is not made to be used just by itself plugged straight into a computer because it just runs off of, let's just see if I can do it without, oh, I apologize to headphone users. This is, this, yeah, there we go. And yes, I'm using the dollar store brand, AA batteries, got 10 for a dollar, and if this is still running on the first one, it's not a high draw item. So I think I'll get away with these until I drop the money on, oop, sorry, drop the money on uh, better batteries. I just had to see if it worked. And it does. But like I said in that video, not a lot of kick on its own. Had to continue the hunt to find an audio interface. Like I did with this little guy. Not quite an audio interface, but it is a preamp. Let's just get the focus going. Oh, no, there we go. Maybe one day I'll edit out the, no, no, why? And all those other things. But I like leaving the minutes. Kind of my thing. And in, by my thing, I mean I do it all the freaking time and annoy the crap out of people. This is the M Audio Audio Buddy, and it looks like my little fuzzy buddy is actually about to make a reappearance. He's staring at me from the floor. Nice little preamp. Two channels. It honestly has a lot of kick when you're uh, using these front inputs here. But the main reason I bought it is actually on the back. And if you see this little word right here, you know why. Has some nice XLR inputs, which for those of you who are like, what's XLR? That, that's what these are called. And it has phantom power, or sort of has phantom power. Phantom power is actually about 48 volts shot straight into the microphone to make it work, which Despite having XLR inputs, XLR inputs, mind you, this does not support phantom power. Glad I didn't test that. Turns out it'll fry this little guy. It's meant to be used with the batteries only. The model that came out after this fortunately does have phantom power support and battery support. But yeah, Oop, camera bump. This little guy has XL or uh, phantom power. This puts out 40 volts instead of 48, so your high drain microphones really get no use out of it. But you know, I've got a few microphones that I've thrifted. Hey, cat. That actually like this. The only downside is, unlike when you're going through the front, it doesn't get a lot of kick, and so I have to use an additional preamp in order to get good audio out of those. Now, I will say one thing about both of these. Neither one of these came with the right cords, or any cords actually. He's going to model them for you. So, I had to get a little creative. For the Audio Buddy, it was relatively easy. Let's just pull this up here. Found a power brick from another item. The tricky part was getting the right voltage. This is... Ah, yes, 9 volts AC. Now, 9 volts DC, or 12 volts DC, and sometimes even 12 volts AC, easy to find. 
Not so much on the 9 volts. This is the one and only one that I found, and it was only a buck. Yay. This actually only cost me 7 bucks, and believe it or not, this microphone cost me 5 and the funny part is this microphone's original retail value was $419, according to Audio-Technica. It's on their website, uh, the AT822. Google it, and it'll be the MSRP is not $419. And a lot of people said it was worth every penny. Now, of course, current going price is $1 to $200, depending on condition. I paid 5 bucks, so I did quite well. I paid seven for the audio buddy. It was only originally about a hundred bucks. Currently goes for about forty. So, not as big of a savings, but you know, I I don't mind. I actually get a lot of use out of it. Now, the thing about this didn't have the right end, so I jury rigged my own. I found a cable with the right end, did a little creative soldering, and used a epoxy putty to make the end here. It's nice hard plastic. I swear by epoxy putty, even if I don't always make it pretty. Sometimes I'll carve it up like I did with this right here. This little connector, this is also epoxy putty, is for this. I had to get creative. This little guy actually came off of another thrifted microphone. I found a karaoke mic. Let's just see if I can get a little bit better focus. There we go. This came off of a karaoke mic. And honestly, this thing's a piece of poo. The karaoke mic is dead. It's dead on arrival, but I paid a dollar for it and I bought it specifically for this connector. I had to actually make a pin there. It only had the uh, two pins here. So I had to make my own pin there and after I took it apart, did a little creative soldering with some wires, I added a 3.5 millimeter jack. This was originally only a mono output, so I actually made it a stereo output specifically to line up with all these pins and use these stereo heads here. Oh, it's such a nice mic. So yeah, that was fun. However, stereo, stereo, mono. Gave me so many problems because it turns out a lot of the connectors I had while they were stereo to mono didn't actually go the proper direction. I needed the opposite of what I had basically. Instead of stereo to mono, I needed mono to stereo. And while it doesn't sound like it should be an issue, mm, no, big, big issue. Because I ended up only getting the left channel out of the microphone when piping it through the audio buddy. And oop, that's my finger. There we go. But yeah, I ended up, well, I gotta love these unboxing style videos. I ended up getting really sad audio out of the audio buddy when using that connector and any of the cables that I had on hand, so I had to get creative. Ended up digging through one of my bins of connectors and found, well, two different connectors that I joined together and an additional two cables that I joined together to make a very ugly kludge that worked. I got wonderful mono audio out of the microphone into my computer, but it was way too many cables, way too many connectors. Decided to make my own using the same principles. So after digging around again, I found a ripped to heck, uh, guitar cable that my girlfriend had kept over the years. She didn't know why. Harvested the ends off of it. Ripped open a TV that I had pulled out of a dumpster because eh, I'm not keeping it. It doesn't work. It's dead on arrival and it doesn't have an easy cheap fix. Oh no, cat! Nope. He's trying to help me tell the story. Ended up taking a couple of parts off of it and made this little ugly beauty. This is a left-right stereo interconnect to mono quarter-inch adapter. I've made two of these for the audio, but come here. There we go. Fits perfectly, like a glove. And it's meant to work with cables like this. Let's just go ahead and 
doing this through the viewfinder is not the easiest thing in the world. There we go. I will say the wide angle lens makes this much easier. And it goes to a nice 3.5 millimeter jack. Oh goodness, cat, what are you doing? <laughs> he has found everything in the world to mess with. Okay, cat, just go. There you go. Good boy. Get in the chair. Get in the chair. Good boy. See what I have to put up with. <laughs> he is a little derp, but he's a sweetie. So yes, I've made two of these adapters, and I've got quite a few of these types of cables from, well, my bags of cords from thrifting and dumpster diving. So yes, I have one for each end, and so I get some great output. I keep whacking the freaking tripod. Now there's one more big issue I have to tell, talk about because if any of you try to use audio preamps like this into your computer, you're going to find that computers don't always like that. You're going to get a lot of interference, a lot of hissing, and a lot of garbledy, just nastiness. Oh, I actually was pulling my hair out for a couple of days trying to figure out why I was getting the <laughs> kind of noise out of my... Uh, plugs because this goes into speakers and headphones and sounds beautiful but computers it sounds like I'm channeling the ninth circle so I just needed to figure out what was going on and it turns out I needed an external audio card so I grabbed one of these little guys had a couple laying around after another project let's just get a little better focus there we go these are cheap little chintzy USB sound cards. This one cost me a dollar on eBay from China. Well, I need to stop whacking the tripod. This one, uh, notice how it looks much better, and this one is quite wiggly because it was a dollar. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. This one, not so much. It is a little bent for some reason, always has been, but is firm and strong like bull. It comes apart nicely, though, because, well, there was another project I was working on, and I'll show you that one later. Let's just say I, well, I might as well tell you what it is. I turned one of these into a USB microphone. I'll show you how to do that later. Now that I have a camera that works. <laughs> um, but yeah, they come apart. They're dirt cheap on eBay. And despite the obvious build difference and the fact that this one was $3, this one was $1, I get the same results out of them. And that is good audio out of that into my computer. I'm a happy boy. And I'm even happier now because today, this honestly had no pull on the video, but hey, why not? I got this little guy. It's the exact same thing, except it's by M Audio and actually goes for about 20 bucks in some circles. It is the M Audio Micro USB adapter came packaged with a music keyboard for some reason and yeah somebody donated it picked it up for a buck good times I'm actually gonna be testing this out later on in this video when I show you what's coming up next it's let's just say it's the reason I always check mystery boxes now now this is probably one of the most unbelievable finds I had this innocuous white box. My girlfriend found it and brought it to me thinking that I really needed to take a look and I want to go ahead and say sorry for the post narration over pictures but there's a reason. Yeah this box is actually the reason why I now check each and every mysterious white box we come across. Let's just go ahead and show you what's inside. This really really nice and from what I can tell never used motherboard I mean it's still got stickers all over it this is the Gigabyte GAZ77X-UD5H it's a mouthful but what I can tell you is that this motherboard still sells in the neighborhood of about $200 and if you're wondering what the processor is that's an i7-3770K 
a $350 processor is what it goes for. Yes, $350 is what it currently goes for. And it's just got its stock cooler. When we got this home, we plugged it into her computer, popped in a Linux Live CD so we could just check it out. And turns out the processor, according to Linux, was overclocked to 3.7 gigahertz already. But when I plugged it into my computer and finally got Windows running after a lot of trial and error due to switching from an AMD processor to an Intel processor, hence why I had a small hiatus in my videos, it is clocking in at 3.9 gigahertz on the stock cooler. And I showed you at the starting of this video that I've got a new one. Yep, the fact that I'm going to be taking that cooler I showed you at the beginning and plugging it into this computer is why I needed to do this video now because I otherwise wouldn't have been able to show you without taking my computer apart and making a big mess. And it's actually why I'm showing you these pictures instead of the real thing on video is because I don't feel like taking my computer apart to show you this stuff. Yeah, that's about $500, oh, over $500 worth of tech upgrades and we paid a whopping eight bucks for this. To this day, this is still my most unbelievable find in general thrifting, let alone tech. So yeah, those were some of my best tech finds, and I honestly can't believe the microphone, the motherboard, the CPU, the graphics card, the fact that I'm using more thrifted items than not these days. In fact, the microphone that I've been talking into this whole time is also thrifted, and I will show it later. Until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.